Kenny Easterday sees himself as just an ordinary man, but this 35-year-old is unique. No car accident, no train accident, no bus accident, no Vietnam. I was born this way. Kenny's spine and legs failed to grow in the womb, and when he was six months old, doctors made the decision to amputate. Just because he doesn't have legs and doesn't make him different than you or me, he can do anything you can do. Kenny has to fight harder for what he needs, what he wants. Divorced from his first wife, in 2004, he got engaged to his fiancée, Nikki. People want to know if Kenny has his private parts. Here, I'll just show you. <laughs> We're going to follow Kenny for a year of his life, 12 months that tests his relationship. To be honest, I don't think our relationship can be threatened much worse than it already is. And his health. I think he knows that if he doesn't have the surgery, that he may die. But whatever life throws at him, Kenny always fights back. No, mommy don't need to push us, we can push ourselves. This is the remarkable story of the man with half a body. The city of Princeton is in the mountain state of West Virginia. In February 2009, this ordinary suburb was home to 35-year-old Kenny Easterday and his fiancée of five years, Nikki. To a lot of people, it looks like that I've been cut in half, but I haven't been cut in half. You know, I just don't have any legs. With a normal person, their body's longer than mine. If my body was the same length as theirs, I wouldn't be able to walk on my hands because my body would drag. That's why I can walk on my hands. That's why my body doesn't drag. He looks from the head down to the waist like any other normal man. He does have hips. So of course, he's got his male parts. But then it just sort of flattens out. That's the reason when he sits, he can't sit straight up. He has to sit at an angle because to sit flat down, then he would be sitting on his private part. I have no legs, so what? I'm no different than you. I'm no different than anybody. I put my shirt on the same way anybody else does. I can't say I put my pants on the same way as everybody else does, but, you know, I eat the same way anybody else does. You know, there's nothing different about me. He washes dishes, he cooks, he vacuums, he mows lawn. I've never seen him not be able to do anything, um, no matter what it is. Kenny has never worn prosthetic legs or relied on a wheelchair. Believing he'd be more mobile and independent without them, he learned to walk using his arms. I've been like this for 35 years. I've walked on my hands, you know, for 35 years, and I got calluses. My other hand has them too. The older I got, you know, the more tougher my hands would get from naturally walking on my hands. Even though he has the calluses on his hands, he has the most gentle hands I've ever been touched by. Kenny refused to let his disability hold him back. An adventurous child never far from his skateboard, he took part in all the activities other children take for granted. But his thrill-seeking nature did lead to accidents. I broke both of my wrists sled riding. I uh, flipped off and was aiming towards a telephone pole. So when I flipped off, both my wrists bent completely down to my arms. <laughs> so now I walk like this. Kenny's unique body always makes him the center of attention. 
I could be walking through a store and people will stand there and stare at me. It doesn't bother me now. Back when I was younger, it kind of did bother me. Ignorant people look at him as a freak. Um, but Kenny considers himself a regular person just like I do. He has a feisty attitude, but he has a good sense of humor. He likes to pull pranks on people because of that handicap. He'll even jump out in front of people and walk away. Kenny's strong upper body means he can easily swing and climb, but he has to be careful. He was born without a fully formed spine, and falling is not an option. If I would fall really hard, it could kill me. That's the chance I had to take. I'm not going to not live my life because of that. But at the moment, life is hard. Kenny and his fiancée, Nikki, have just lost their trailer home and have moved into a cramped motel room in Princeton, West Virginia. It bothered me very much for him to live in a motel. He should not have to live like that. He should have a home for himself. I'd be happy if he'd come home. You know, he, he's my baby, and I worry about him. Home for Jesse and Sharon is a suburb of Pennsylvania, 300 miles away. But despite the distance, Kenny maintains a close bond with his parents. Kenny has a very special love and relationship with his dad. Now, don't take me wrong, I'm not saying he doesn't love me, because I know he does. But he has a different kind of love for his dad. Don't you start that blubbering again. Kenny and his dad's relationship is awesome. I've never seen a father and son so close. His dad has taught him a lot from how to walk to how to hold his head up and not be ashamed of his condition. Kenny's condition led to fame throughout the world with a regular role on the Jerry Springer show and his new job also led to love. I guess they kind of like fell in love with him and they enjoyed seeing him on the program. Born with an extremely rare medical condition, 35-year-old Kenny Easterday had his legs amputated when he was just six months old. The only thing that's not there are legs. It's February 2009 and Kenny and his fiancée, Nikki, are on their way to visit his parents for the weekend. The journey to Pennsylvania will take six hours. Let me drive. <laughs> Come on. No. Come on. No. Oh. You're not at the park. You can't drive. Give me 15. Yeah, get me a Pepsi. The world is not designed for Kenny, but that doesn't hold him back. It's really hard on my hands when it's cold. <sighs> it's minus 14 degrees and I'm out here trying to keep warm. <sighs> this is one of the coldest days that we've had so far this year. Kenny's condition makes sitting for long periods very uncomfortable. I hate making this trip because my body gets so sore. It well, just makes... I know you get tired after the trip, but still, aren't you happy to see your mom and dad? Well, yeah, but not excited to where I'm going to jump in their arms. That would be so cute. No, that would not be. <laughs> and no, I'm not doing it. Just to give you a laugh, Nikki. Finally, Kenny and Nikki arrive in Pennsylvania. Do I like seeing my mother? Of course. Hey, I don't like him being that far away. What do you think? Anything happens to him, you know, 
it would take it would take us forever to get there. And I, I just don't like the idea of him living that far away from home. His mom worries about his health. Um, I think too much. Kenny does have major health issues, but that's what I'm here for. Kenny's mom, Sharon, had already had two children when she conceived Kenny. But she knew this pregnancy was different. I knew something was wrong because he didn't move. He, he just laid, you know, and, but nobody would listen. They told me I had a lazy baby. And then that's the way, you know, he was born. Kenny was born on December the 7th, 1973. The nurse brought out, and this is your son grabbed a blank and flipped it over. And I just looked down and I, within a maze, I just stood there and looked. And I looked down and said, what's wrong with him? I don't know. And I said, well, that's the end of that one. While still in the womb, Kenny had developed an extremely rare condition called sacral agenesis. It affects only one in 25,000 live births. This X-ray shows a baby born with the same condition as Kenny. The way he was, his legs was like a bat wing. Frog legs. Frog, yeah. His legs were bent knee, like knee, this. Kneecap. And there was a big uh, web in here. And his foot was turned like this. Sections of Kenny's spine failed to form properly, and his legs hadn't developed in the normal way. The bottom portion of the spine is the sacrum, and that is what is missing for Kenny. So this part of his back was floating free from his pelvis. They told us he probably wouldn't live. If he made it through the first 24 hours, possibility, but they didn't think so. Kenny's case is extreme and also very rare, and so we don't have many people who have lived into adulthood in his situation. My parents, especially my mother, didn't understand why this happened. You know, having two normal kids and then going through what she went through with me. You know, it took my mother a really, really long time to accept me. I, I guess I was in shock. I, I don't, I don't know any other way to describe it. I was very afraid of him. I, um, I didn't do anything for him. I didn't hold him. I didn't touch him. I was afraid of hurting him. I held him in the hospital and kept him close. With no backbone and his spinal cord exposed, Kenny's chances of survival were minimal. At just six months old, his parents were faced with a difficult dilemma. Doctors wanted to amputate Kenny's legs below the knee so they could use the bones from his shins to complete his partially formed spine. You know, Kenny, that was the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life. I know. Thought I did the best thing for you. And that you did. I hope. And nobody's going to ever tell me any different. A spine had been created for Kenny, but his wounds wouldn't heal. And we took him home in a body cast, and <coughs> he was doing real good, but then the one started to seep, and it wouldn't heal. They couldn't get it to heal, and then it, was into, it, it had gone into the first stage of the cancer. And they told us that if we could leave it alone, leave, leave what was left of his legs on, but then we would probably use, lose him in six months to a year. And I'd rather have what I have than not have him at all. A second amputation removed the remainder of Kenny's legs, but doctors still feared he wouldn't make it to adulthood. Because in Children's Hospital, they gave him the time span of 17 years old, and he would have been dead. Well, he's over that time span. And having no legs didn't stop Kenny from being mobile. My dad pretty much taught me how to walk on my hands. I just told him walk behind his mother because she walks like a duck, so just walk like her. At first, Sharon feared for his safety. I didn't want him to get hurt, so I wouldn't let him go outside and play. 
And that's when I learned that if I wanted my son to grow up to have anywhere near a normal life, then I had to step back and let him learn to do on his own. With his mobility came freedom, and Kenny threw himself into every activity he tried. He did anything any other child would do. Climb hills, climb trees. You left nothing being a problem to him. I had a good childhood. I mean, I was able to go and play with other kids and do other things, you know, like a normal kid would do. Yes, he was a very happy boy. He really didn't lose nothing because there was nothing there to lose. Always had a skateboard. I didn't have to worry because everybody knew him. Kenny was out on his skateboard when he was spotted by a local journalist who wrote an article about the boy with half a body. The story spread around the world. It all started with a newspaper, and then it just went from one thing to another. In 1987, at the age of just 12, Kenny became a movie star. Did you come to take me home? Cast to play himself in a feature film. Today, Kenny's back on the streets where he grew up. This is his old family home. I used to live right there upstairs. That window there, that's my bedroom window. The bottom used to be a store. I used to ride all over town here because back then everybody knew who I was and nobody bothered me. The film was based on Kenny's childhood experience when doctors attempted to persuade him to wear prosthetic legs. Kenny resisted. They were so heavy that he found them impossible to use. So he was restricted to sitting in a wheelchair. I don't want to be stuck in a wheelchair or trying to keep my balance on two long legs. I don't want to hide either. Why should I feel bad about myself? They were very uncomfortable. You know, they were very heavy and I thought, why should I hide myself just to please others? I'm not doing it. If I was handicapped, it's because of these damn legs. In the movie, Kenny's character went to a mainstream school, but the reality was very different. Kenny was forced to attend a school for children with physical and mental disabilities. Today, he's back there for the first time in 20 years. It was a uh, school for the handicapped. I didn't feel that I needed to go to a school like this because I didn't feel there was anything wrong with me. And a lot of the kids here, I, I didn't get along with neither, you know, because they had their problems and I didn't understand being a child, why they were going through the problems they were going through, but I coped with it the best way that I possibly could. Following the release of the movie, Kenny traveled the world with his dad, Jesse. They attended premieres, appeared on talk shows, and Kenny was even asked to be a torch carrier at the 1988 Seoul Olympics. They lit the torch for him, and he was on his skateboard, and he carried the uh, torch. It made me feel very proud. But Kenny found it hard to juggle his newfound fame with his education. At 17, he left school for good. A lot of people didn't think that I would survive. They didn't think that I would be able to cope in the real world. But Kenny proved them wrong. At 18, after dating his able-bodied childhood sweetheart for a year, the couple married and moved into a home of their own. Unfortunately, the marriage didn't last and they divorced two years later. I got married at a young age. Terrible mistake. You know, I went through a bad marriage. I went through a really, really bad divorce. I tried going out and getting odd jobs and try to make a paycheck. And I get a door slammed in my face. As the doors to ordinary jobs closed, another door opened into show business. At 21, Kenny was asked to appear on The Jerry Springer Show. They just showed up at our house one day. 
and said, said, Kenny, I want you on my show. Kenny became a regular on the show. Known as the messenger, he was one of the familiar on-screen crew. I didn't hesitate about going to work for him because Jerry Springer has never, ever asked me what happened to me. He's always showed me respect. When he started doing the Jerry Springer show, that's when people started recognizing him. Hey, there's Kenny, there's Kenny. Everybody recognized who I was, and I'd have people sit at the bottom of my driveway taking pictures. His head just really swelled up. I guess they kind of like fell in love with him, and they enjoyed seeing him on the program. But it wasn't just the public who fell for Kenny. While working on The Springer Show, he met and fell in love with Nikki. Now engaged for five years, can their relationship survive the pressure of living with Kenny's unique condition? To be honest, I don't think our relationship can be threatened much worse than it already is. <laughs> 35-year-old Kenny Easterday was born with a rare condition that has left him with half a body. In 2009, he was living with his fiancée, Nikki. The couple first met in the late 90s, when Kenny was single and working on the Jerry Springer show. The attraction was instant. <laughs> Kenny's very good looking. You would not believe the women I have to fight off. We go in restaurants and grocery stores and I have these women walking up, God, I love his hair, can I rub his hair? Can I just, I'm like, no, he's mine. That's my hair, don't touch it. Um, but yeah, I'm not the first girl Kenny ever dated. Besides Nikki, I've had four other relationships, and that's including my ex-wife. I was more into my work. From the beginning of their relationship, Nikki has been plagued by one particularly personal question. People want to know if Kenny has his private parts. <laughs> They sort of wonder, with Kenny being cut up so far, if that wasn't taken along with his legs, and it's not. He's just like every other guy. It's mostly women that ask me, because women are more curious than men. And I, and I think a lot of them ask me because they want to see what it's like. You know, to them, I'm different. It sometimes seems there's no end to the intimate questioning. The sex conversation. If I get asked that question again, I'm just gonna say, you're just gonna have to find out. We have sex just like any other couple. Kenny has all of his parts like any other man. Here, I'll just show you. <laughs> what man would feel normal without having his manhood? He wouldn't. You know, to a guy, that's a big part of his life. Honestly, for me being a man, if I wasn't able to have sex, I think I would go insane. You missed. That would be not even something I would even want to think about, you know, me not having my penis. Kind of like dinners, uh, bubble baths, just sitting on the couch watching a movie, eating popcorn. Um, we would go for walks in the park. We would sit for hours and just talk. It was sort of like, is this gonna work? And after 13 days, yeah, it was true love. That was your fault, I missed. <laughs> that was your fault. Kenny has always wanted to have children of his own. I want a child to carry my name, someone that can carry my legacy on and be able to say, well, that's my daddy. Although we don't have lots of uh, studies on people as affected as Kenny, um, we do find that people have normal sexual function. So physiologically, there's no reason why f Kenny could not be a father. A lot of people think if I have a kid, it's going to come out with two heads or four arms or whatever. It's going to come out deformed. But Kenny can't have children with Nikki because before they met, she had been sterilized. 
we've talked about maybe adopting someday. Adoption might be an option, but right now, no, we can't have children. And now there's a new barrier to having a family of their own. Kenny's health has started to deteriorate. Any plans for adoption will have to go on hold until he can get better. He's not a healthy young man, by no means. He's developed at um, osteoporosis and he's got arthritis, but he doesn't let that stop him. And he doesn't like people to see when he's in pain. All right. That's it. Okay, there's jelly right here. All right, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Are you hurting that bad? Doctor at the hospital told me that my neck's filling up with fluid. Even when I sit, I can feel the bones in my butt. And I've never felt that before until here recently. Uh, you gotta watch what you do. Kenny walks on his hands and his shoulders then have to do a lot more work than they were designed to do. And that can result in, in pain and, and degenerative conditions in the shoulders as well. Well, they said there's seven stages to the osteoporosis and I'm at stage five now. And they're wanting to do surgery on my back and put a metal rod up to my neck down to where that bone was to give me more support. And I said, no, you're not doing it. Does your mother know this? I'm not telling her that. She worries enough about me. The osteoporosis also means Kenny has had to give up working on the Jerry Springer show. With only disability benefits for income and living in a motel, Kenny and Nikki find their relationship increasingly under pressure. Kenny and I are on a very rocky road as far as our relationship goes. To be honest, I don't think our relationship can be threatened much worse than it already is. By March 2009, Kenny's relationship with Nikki is in deep trouble. She wanted her freedom. She wasn't woman enough to say, hey, I'm not happy no more. I don't want this no more. She didn't do that. You know, I feel when you're in a relationship and if there's a problem in the relationship, you try to work through it and you try to make it work. If you don't want to be with that person, then be respectful to that person and say, the relationship doesn't work. Just a month later, and Nikki moves out, leaving Kenny alone in the motel. I was not eating. I stopped caring. I called my dad and I said, I can't do this no more. You need to come and get me. You called me? Did dad come and get me? I'm tired of it. I gotta come home. And it sounded like he was gonna break down, tone of his voice. I said, I'll be there as quick as your mother gets home. They got there and I basically left with just the clothes on my back. I didn't care about the other stuff. I just wanted to be gone from there. He didn't look very healthy. Eyes were all dark, big black circles, big bags under his eyes. He just didn't look good at all. We brought him home. He's been here ever since. And I hope that's where he stays. Escaping his failing relationship by moving into his parents' new home in Pennsylvania gives Kenny some much needed stability and a chance to concentrate on improving his health. I really do feel that he is happy to be home because he has more independence here. Any child of his age would want to get away from home and do the thing that he wants to do, but uh, he does whatever he wants here. We don't question what he does. My parents, they do their own thing. I do my own thing. They watch their own programs that they like downstairs. I watch what I like up here. They keep me locked up in this room. They stick food underneath. The, no, no. Hell no, I ain't moving out. 
I got it too good here. Why, why should I move out? Even though he lives with his parents, Kenny doesn't want to be dependent on them and still insists on doing everything for himself. I don't want people to wait on me, you know? I'm not helpless. It's not my arms that can't move. I don't depend on nobody. I don't expect my parents to, you know, and I don't expect anybody else to. I do everything on my own, and that's, you know, the way I've always been, and that's the way, you know, I'm always going to do things. But in April 2010, Kenny suffers a further blow, as a side effect of his condition gives him problems with his kidneys. My kidneys have a tendency to swell. It's from bacteria. The bacterial infections in his kidneys are caused by Kenny's bladder not working properly. Urine passes from the kidneys down into the bladder. In a normal bladder, when it becomes full, muscles contract to push the urine out of the body. His bladder doesn't function normally because the nerves that feed the bladder are where the sacrum is or the, or the tailbone. Um, that didn't form properly in Kenny. Without these nerves, Kenny's bladder muscle is not strong enough to push urine out of the body. Unable to exit the body, it flows back up into the kidneys, causing infection and swelling. Just over time, the kidneys have just taken this strain, and so now they're starting to not function as well. And so he's having procedures done to help keep the kidneys to function as normally as they can. What the doctors has done was just put two tubes in each kidney so they can drain individually. There's one in my back and there's one here on my side, right here, and it's very uncomfortable for me to sit even sit here on this chair, it hurts, you know, and it's because of the tubes. You're not gonna be gone long, are you? No. Having the tubes inserted under local anesthetic to try to stop the infections means Kenny has avoided having a more serious surgery. But the pain is affecting Kenny's ability to get around. God's sakes, this is hot. Fortunately, some of his parents' friends have given him a mobility scooter. With the tubes in place, it makes it much more difficult to walk around, and with the pain, he sort of wears out a little bit more quickly. So the scooter helps be able to get him around more. Here you go, boss. Get on there. Scoot down the road. Don't go too fast. Go down the road easy. I will. Slow. Be careful. I will. How long are you going to be? I don't know. Fiercely independent, Kenny has always refused to use a wheelchair but he has accepted his scooter. It's not a wheelchair. That's the difference. It's not a wheelchair. There's nothing to explain. It's not a wheelchair. A wheelchair is something that you have to be pushed around in, you know, uh, be helped into. This is not, this here is something that gives you the ability to be able to get around on your own. It could be dangerous if I'm not careful, but hey, I live on the dangerous side. <laughs> and now he has his new scooter. Kenny can go grocery shopping on his own, something he was unable to do before. I got the scooter a few months back, and it takes a lot of the stress and stuff off my body before I would have to walk. And I could only walk so far, then I have to sit and rest. And it would take me way over an hour to get where I need to go. So, but with the scooter, I'm there and back in no time. So, you know, it, it, it helps. Root beer barrels. I think that should do it. Now that Kenny is back in his hometown, he is recognized by almost everyone he meets. Oh, we used to play together when we were little. OK. Yeah, you used to come over to our house and oh, we would run on you and be on your skateboard, and we'd be running up the street with you. Oh, OK. Yeah, 2011. 
Thank you. Hey, it's nice seeing you again. You too. Kenny's adapted to life back home, and his scooter has increased his mobility and freedom. If he can sort out his kidney problem, he'll be able to start to think about finding a new relationship. I fell in love with you the day I saw you. OK, sister. Thirty-six-year-old Kenny Easterday's unique body has given him a career in show business. What's up, man? And he's still something of a local celebrity. Well, there's been quite a few people walk up to him in a store or on the sidewalk or wherever he was at. Somebody would recognize him. But yeah, he's been recognized quite a bit. <clears throat> None off the top. It's not too often I get a chance to do a celebrity, though, you know. <laughs> <laughs> See, I seen you on, um, what was that? Springer? Yep, that's yeah. the one. That's the one. You got a loyal following around here. We all know who he is. Exactly. Much respect from all of us. When Kenny split up with Nikki, he wanted a new look, so he changed his hairstyle. You know, who cut it the last time? My mother cut it. Well, I can tell. She's got a mom's haircut. Yeah, exactly. She got it going all crisscrossy. <laughs> all right, well, here you go, Kenny. All right, buddy. All right, like I said, thanks for stopping in, man. All right, cuz. Kenny's kidneys are being drained of excess fluid by tubes that doctors have inserted. However, he's still in a lot of pain. Like right in there, like like a cramps or something. Yeah. <laughs> Did you drink the water? Yes. How much? All of it. My mother can be a bit overprotective, especially with me being sick now. You have to worry about him a little bit more. A mm -hmm. lot more. I don't want no. nothing to drink. That's what I'll take. Can you want water? No, I don't want nothing. I have to remember that Kenny's not a child. He's a grown man, and it's, I have a bad habit of telling him what well, Kenny can't do sometimes, but I try. I try not to. You know, he's my baby. He's always going to be my baby. I don't care how old he is. You know, as long as I'm alive, he's my baby. Mm. Uh, you, want this? Yeah. you don't want this? Well, he is sick. Something wrong with him. It's just damn heat. The heat? Can we turn that fan on, you think? No, I'll get it. He's pulled down on one. Good. Hold on. Again. Okay. Do it again. Okay. It might help a little bit. I feel like a stuffed pig. Didn't you be back by five? Yeah. OK, yeah, that's good. Here, let's put this arm down. I don't want you to fall out. You know, move your arm. That's what those are for. Today, Kenny has an appointment with his doctor for her to check how the tubes are working. The bumps really hurt, especially when I hit them. It's not very comfortable. How are you feeling? Okay, I mean, with these tubes in me, it's so uncomfortable. It feels like that when I sit, that they're pushing up through me, you know, and, and it's like they're hitting a nerve. The other day, I actually stepped on the one and I thought I yanked it out. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah. The tubes were inserted into Kenny's kidneys under local anesthetic to drain urine from them and prevent infections. If they don't work, he will need a major operation. What basically they're looking at doing is doing a procedure that replaces the bladder that doesn't work as well um, to be able to take some of the strain off the kidneys. 
I think he knows that if he doesn't have the surgery that you know his kidneys aren't going to work which is eventually going to lead to either dialysis or that he's not going to be well and that he may die. But because Kenny doesn't want to risk a general anesthetic, his doctor agrees to give the tubes a little longer to see if they can get his kidneys back to good health. It's not the surgery that I'm worried about. It's being put to sleep that I'm worried about. I don't never do good. Uh, to me, it's, it, it, it puts too much stress on, on my body and stuff. That's just something I don't want to go through again. But we'll see how the tubes do first okay. and see how you do. Right. I mean, I think we just have to keep it sort of on the back burner and say, okay, this is our option. All right. All right. I'll see you in about a month. All right. All right. If you need anything else, just give me a call, I okay? Will. I will. All right. The doctor made the right decision. Two weeks later, the tubes have worked and Kenny's kidney infection has cleared up. Soon the tubes can be taken out. Kenny believes that moving home may have saved his life. I think that by me coming back home and me getting over the things that I've gotten over was the best thing for me to do. No, mommy don't need to push us, we can push ourselves. I have to live my life for me and do what's right for me by getting my health back to normal. And now things have become much easier and a lot better. With his health improving, Kenny hopes one day he'll find a new girlfriend to share his life, even though he's lacking in confidence. I just think it's hard for me to find a girlfriend. You know, that's why I don't, I don't really try. I don't think it's that they don't like me. I think they don't find me attractive. I don't think I'm attractive. A lot of women have actually had sex with me because they were curious. They see me and they think in their head, is he able? Kenny is heading to the local town library to check his emails. While online, he finds a website about himself and, to his surprise, some messages from female fans. I didn't even know this was even on here. You're awesome. Dude, you must be well, strong. Love you. Okay. That's from Annie. I fell in love with you the day I saw you. Okay, sister. Love you, Kenny, from Ireland. You're quite a... Handsome? That's all it says. I never even knew this was even on here. This is really crazy. Really, really, really crazy. If they find me good looking, then okay. <laughs> I would like to see him get a girl, start a family, and live until he's 80. I thought I was going to be here. And I would like for him to find somebody that I know would stay and they would be happy. And when, you know, his dad and I are gone, she's going to be there, like I tell him. The right one, she's out there. Just give it time. She'll be alone. It's been a turbulent year for Kenny. But now his future is looking bright. I'm proud of who he is, what he accomplished. Oh, I know he's amazing. He knows that too. I don't want to make his head no bigger than what it is. Kenny's a very amazing young man, and I wouldn't change anything in this world about him. Nothing. Yes, I've been on Jerry Springer. Yes, I've made a movie. Yes, I've done other things in my life. I'm just a normal guy that wants to live a normal life like anybody else and just be happy.